Hello and welcome. We're here to share with you today our market, an market analysis for Tiffany & Co. in the Canadian division, as well as share some recommended solutions on how they can improve their marketing strategy. First of all, I'll share with you a little bit about our industry, our company, as well as our main competitors. So the industry in general has typically been dominated by historic brands that leverage this history in order to market to their customers based on prestige that their products will provide to their consumers. Um, however, despite this, the overall industry has been struggling worldwide. There's been a 4% decrease in revenue in 2018. However, on the bright side, the Canadian jewelry market has actually been expected to grow. Um, it's expected to grow roughly 0.7% over the next five years. So just a brief history of Tiffany & Co. It was founded in New York City in 1837 and markets itself as an arbiter of taste and style. Um, Tiffany & Co. strikes a balance between luxury and attainability. Um, their strategy is to market some entry-level products to younger consumers. And over time, as these customers um, grow in their careers, their taste and purchases grow accordingly. So briefly on our um, two main competitors in Canada, we have Cartier and Swarovski. Cartier is quite prestigious, quite expensive. Um, they have ties to French royalty and they never compromise on price. On the lower end, we have Swarovski. So they're more um, affordability focused. Um, their slogan is a diamond for everyone. And they actually use um, modern uh, crystal cutting techniques to keep their costs low and therefore their prices. Um, Tiffany actually falls somewhere in the middle uh, between these two um, uh, competitors, which puts us in a good spot competitively. Um, brief SWOT analysis for Tiffany & Co. We have some internal factors, strengths and weaknesses. We have a strong brand recognition as well as an innovative design team. This team has won many awards over the years and continues to create new designs. Um, however, we do have minimal online presence and we need to target this in the future. So opportunities and threats. We do have access to some more capital due to the acquisition by LVMH. This will allow us to increase our advertising spending. Um, overall, there's been an increased trend towards online spending. This will allow us to leverage new techniques, and new um, avenues for shopping. We also have competitive rivals in the industry, like I said earlier. Um, this uh, requires that Tiffany & Co. differentiate themselves further. So next up, for brand health analysis, we give you Russell. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Now, a big part of what defines the jewelry industry in the contemporary age is how the different brands still continue to retain their heritage and their history in the modern world. And we see this particularly in the case of Tiffany & Company as well, which has this philosophy of how it aspires and hopes to be a trendsetter uh, with its jewelry, uh, with its products as well. Now, if we cross compare this to what we see uh, in the current market as well, we see that in Canada, Tiffany & Company continues to be the fourth largest jewelry, luxury jewelry brand uh, in retrospect to that of other brands. Now, however, when we look at the market share, we note that its market share in uh, the past few years has shown a decline from the 9.3 that it used to experience to a 7.6 in the year 2013. This, of course, is consistent with what the other jewelry brands have also experienced in the same year. However, when we look at its stock price instead, we note that its stock price has actually increased which is opposite of what it has experienced in its market share. If we briefly look at the Google Trends results as well, as you can see on the screen here, um, on average, we see that Tiffany has been searched more frequently than its competitor Cartier in Canada. Now, if we were to segment this result and we were to analyze it based on its provinces, with the exception of Quebec, we see that there has been a general propensity for consumers to search more and to find out more about the offerings that Tiffany & Company has, uh, which is of course again consistent and goes back to what we have analyzed in its brand health aspect as well. Now moving on to its consumer insights, um, now Nikita will be sharing more. Thank you, Russell. Now to moving on to customer and market insights. So when we first started this project, our first question was, are millennials really buying diamonds? The answer is, not really, but not as much as baby boomers or Gen Y. Now why? There are two reasons for that. One, because they prefer to spend on non-materialistic things such as concerts, travel and experiences, not materialistic products such as cars and houses. Secondly, millennials are a lot more influenced by the people around them and especially 
celebrities and famous people. In this picture, you can see Kate Middleton. She's very famous all around the world. And what's more important is the diamond, is the ring she's wearing. It's not a diamond ring. It's a sapphire stone ring. And that is something that has come into fashion a lot more recently since she started wearing it. It's also what makes it more um, important is that stone rings are actually a little less um, expensive than diamond rings. And that is why millennials prefer to spend on these kind of rings as compared to diamonds. Then, we also, moving on from the Kate Middleton theme, we realized that millennials are a lot more influenced by popular people such as Lady Gaga. Now, this campaign, the Believe in Love campaign, is kind of a mod modern day Audrey Hepburn campaign. And what really uh, caught our attention was the stock price and the revenue that surged right after this campaign. It shows that, you know, using celebrities makes the brand more relatable, more gives a human aspect to people and they understand, they can connect with the brand. Now, what do Tiffany co consumers or just consumers in general search when they're looking for Tiffany? Tiffany Co, Tiffany Canada, probably thinking, you know, where's the store nearest to me? Uh, Tiffany Advent Calendar and the Tiffany Blue Box Cafe. Now the Blue Box Cafe, this one, uh, currently there's only one in the world, it's in Manhattan, it's in New York, Manhattan, and it's actually gorgeous as you can see. It is an Instagram hotspot, and not only amongst influencers and popular people, but also uh, daily and average people like you and me. Now what, what makes it even more special is that it's not actually as expensive as people usually think it is, it's very reasonably priced, and it gives the opportunity for a person it gives the opportunity for a person to you know, give that personal breakfast that Tiffany's experience that we all want from the movie. Now the advent calendar, this is actually the 2019 advent calendar. As you can see, it looks grand. And it has this nice Christmassy theme to it. And it has actually 24 drawers that open like little small Tiffany blue boxes. Now these are not just expensive products like you know jewelry, rings or bracelets. They're also daily products like a coffee mug. Now, this is actually a little expensive and there are only four available in the world. Lastly, the Google Trend Analysis, something that we've seen uh, a lot, not only just the past five years, but before that as well, is that Tiffany is the most searched during Christmas time. Shows that people want to you know, give their friends and family, loved ones, something that's special, meaningful, even though it's a little expensive. This come, makes us come to the conclusion that uh, Tiffany has a real brand value and importance amongst consumers. Now, moving on to recommendations, Samala. Thank you. So based on the research and all the information we have gathered, we have come up with three main recommendations. So the first one is to improve its social media presence on Instagram. This is because 93% of customer engagement with luxury brands actually happens on Instagram. Uh, as we can see from their current Instagram um, page, a lot of emphasis, a lot of focus goes on the product itself rather than the values these products bring. And we believe that they should feature more of um, celebrities, more um, influencers in order to increase customer interaction, customer engagement, which in turn and subsequently may actually um, change their buying behavior. So the second recommendation is to launch and to open two additional blue box cafes in Canada's most influential cities, which is Toronto and Vancouver. We chose this series because customers living in those areas were particularly uh, particularly interested in um, those cafes. Um, those cafes can also engage with consumers on a level beyond traditional sales techniques, and it will also highlight um, of what the brand stands for. The third recommendation we have come up with is related to seasonal products and advertising. As you can see, this is the advent calendar, which was particularly um, on the rising um, search engine during Christmas period. And we believe that um, Tiffany should tap into that and they should um, launch more product lines uh, during other times of the year. This would help increase sales and awareness and even engagement in, um, let's say, May. Um, also, in t on 10th of May, it's Mother's Day in Canada which can be a good example to increase and boost sales during May period uh, for Tiffany. They can launch campaigns with their um, highlighting the importance of having a mother, having children, and family bonding. Um, so the last one, I would say that they can also have displays in their blue box cafes uh, with all of their products inside. So with this, I want to conclude my presentation and uh, my team's presentation. And if you have any questions, please email us.